Hello, welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and this is our review of the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. The Endorphin Speed line has been a big favourite of ours on the channel and lots of you out there as well. It's obviously designed to be the fast plated training partner to the Endorphin Pro shoe, which is you know the carbon plated racing shoe, whereas the Speed has a nylon plate. But it really transcended that kind of narrow description in the past with the first two versions, which were really up there as probably the best all-rounder running shoes on the market from any brand. So the Speed 3 has made some changes, including the price. It's now £165 in the UK where it's already available. And in the US, I think it's going to be launched on the 16th of August and it's going to cost $170. So that is a price rise in both countries from £155 in the UK and $160 in the US. Uh, the stack is also slightly higher than the Speed 2. It's 0.5 millimeters higher. It's 36 millimeters at the heel and then um, 28 at the forefoot for an 8 millimeter drop, which is the same as the Speed 2. Uh, it's slightly heavier, so B3 weighs at 240 grams or 8.5 ounces in my UK size 9, whereas the Speed 2 was 231 grams or 8.1 ounces. So the main changes that Saucony has made to the shoe is that they've made it a bit wider. They've widened the base uh, of the shoe to create more stability. They've also added little winglets to the kind of to the sides of the nylon plate in the shoe. So just little things to kind of cradle your foot a little bit and kind of make sure that you're putting your force into the right place in the shoe, which is into the plate, um, which should again should increase the stability of the shoe. So it's you know, slightly wider, slightly taller. That's where the weight gain has come from, with a bit more foam in the midsole in general. You've got a full length S shaped nylon plate and Saucony's Speed Roll technology, which is kind of their rocker geometry. Uh, in the shoe as well. And then the foam used is Power Run PB, which is a PBA based foam. You've got a very lightweight, kind of breathable mesh upper, kind of standard stuff there with a bit of cushioning around the heel and a little bit on the tongue as well. And then the outsole uh, is pretty similar to previous versions. They've kind of changed the pattern a little bit to try and improve the grip and it's maybe protrude slightly more than on the previous uh, Endorphin Speed shoes, but it's not really a drastic change. I haven't really noticed a big change in grip from the shoe, although to be fair, I've mostly been running in sunny conditions as opposed to the wet. Fit for me in the Endorphin Speed 3 is true to size, pretty much the same as the previous Speed 2 for me. Uh, definitely wouldn't have sized up or down in this shoe. I find it to be a very comfortable shoe. It's got a nice lockdown fit on it, um, but it isn't too restrictive. So definitely true to size for me. So the fit uh, of the shoe is an interesting one. So it's got this wider design um, and I have quite a narrow foot and I do find in the new shoe that I have a basically too much room in general around the upper. I don't get a very secure lockdown from the shoe. You can see I've heel locked it and I've done that quite tightly and really ramped on the laces. But even then, if I run for longer than about an hour or 10 miles, I do start to get a little bit of rubbing in the heel in the Endorphin Speed 3, which I never had in the previous versions of the shoe. Like I always have had to you know, cinch the laces quite tightly on the Endorphin Speed line because I've got quite a narrow foot, but you see, it's, I've taken it to extremes on the Endorphin Speed 3. Um, and even then I don't feel completely secure in the shoe. Now, I don't think I could size down either because it's not the, I, I don't really have any problems with the length of the shoe. I've got the right amount of room in the toe box, but yeah, I am a little bit loose further back. So I think the new fit of the shoe, this wider fit will probably please more people than it kind of puts off. Um, but at the same time, if you do have a narrow foot like me, it might be something to think about. You are gonna have a little bit more of a struggle to get a lockdown in the shoe than on previous versions. So I've been a massive fan of the Endorphin Speed line from the moment it launched, racked up kind of 550k in the first version of the shoe, just loved using it for everything. Uh, and the second version was basically exactly the same and that was a good thing for me. So when they, when I saw that they had made some you know, fairly big updates to the Endorphin Speed 3, I was worried it was gonna ruin the shoe slightly, but I can say that isn't the case. You know, Aside from my kind of slight fit issues, uh, the ride is still really impressive, has all the stuff you want from the Endorphin Speed. It's comfortable, but still poppy and lightweight and smooth and, just impressive and really good for almost any kind of run. I've done 70K in the Endorphin Speed 3 and I've been you know, clocking up a variety of runs uh, in the shoe to test that versatility. And yeah, it's kind of passed with flying colors. I've done everything in it from you know, kind of base training miles, at easy and steady paces, one very, very easy recovery trudge in the shoe. Um, and then a kind of longer workout in the shoe. Um, and it's you know, been great for all of them. Obviously I used it in Paris at the launch, as you've seen the first run video where I did a 12 miler kind of with the first six miles fairly easy and then the second six miles around six minute per mile, per mile pace. And the following day was an early 
very easy recovery run after a night out in Paris. Uh, and then back in the UK, I've done a steady 10 miler where I was just clipping along on feel and ran it, you know, 58 minute 10 miles, no problem at all, just because it is so smooth and efficient to shoe. Cannot stress that enough. And then I did a workout where I did four 4K reps at a uh, sub 340 per K pace with a 1K recovery in between them at a, as a float recovery. Kind of, I was doing about 410 per K pace on the recoveries. And again, it just feels really good. It is the kind of shoe that makes it a little bit more effortless to run fast at the moment, doing lots of miles and doing lots of back-to-back -back workout days. So the, the workout I did in the shoe, the four times 4K was the second in two days, started the workout feeling tired and the shoe just feels protective, fast, comfortable, everything you want to help you push through a session like that. It's still very comfortable on easy efforts as well. I think you can trudge around in the shoe, no problem at all. Um, I think the only slight concern and comfort I have and it isn't really a concern about this shoe, it's just that the Endorphin Pro 3 is more comfortable, I found, on long runs, and that's just a new wrinkle in the whole Endorphin line. In the past, the Speed was the com most comfortable shoe of the two, and the one I'd be inclined to use for kind of 20 mile efforts or even you know, longer races like the Marathon, whereas the Pro could feel quite harsh. The new version of the Pro is more stacked than the Speed, and I think it is a bit more comfortable and would be the one I'd reach for for those long runs these days. This is still comfortable, but not quite as comfortable, and I would a little bit interested to see if Saucony would actually increase the stack of the speed as well to that kind of world athletics limit of 40 millimeters and see if it was you know slightly more comfortable exciting bouncy shoe even better than the current speed who knows maybe something to look out for next year but this is still a great shoe I think the changes made like I haven't noticed massive changes in stability on the run myself as a neutral runner I never had any problems with stability in the previous versions but I'm sure that'll be something music to the ears of lots of people who do want to use the speed and now can because of the extra stability so I've done about 50k in this shoe so far and that's varied between interval sessions all the way up to a half marathon distance run that I did uh, last week and it's, I'm pleased to say, it's pretty much more of the same as you'd get from the Speed 2. I don't think it's a massively different experience. There might be some minor tweaks in it that, that, that feel slightly different, like that possible extra little bit of cushioning that doesn't really affect it a great deal. Um, but it's still a fantastic shoe. Uh, and when I did that half marathon running it, it wasn't a race, it was a marathon training run exactly what you'd expect from it it was just really fluid felt really good felt like you could go a bit faster in it incredibly versatile um and the slower runs that i've done in this so i'm marathon training at the moment so some of the runs i'm doing are at my base pace which is about four 45 minute kilometers and the faster training sessions i'm doing at about four ten. um and those slower sessions still fantastic just feels great does the job it's not as good as a cushion shoe or something like the Brooks Glycerin 20 uh, for those really easy cushion slow miles but it's not meant to do that it's it's a shoe that's designed for versatility which veers more towards the faster running and can do lots of other stuff as well so as an as a casual trainer that veers towards that speed training it's still a fantastic shoe it you can do slow miles in it and it will be fine but it really comes into its own when you're doing tempo training and even racing I still think this would be a fantastic option as a as a race shoe the minimal changes to the carbon plate, um, which extend a little bit further out uh, to either side of the shoe, I didn't really notice them very much. I I, I never had any issues with stability in the uh, previous Speed 2, so I didn't really notice any major differences in terms of that uh, in the Speed 3. Um, other than that, the upper is pretty much the same as in the uh, Speed 2. I don't think there's any major updates to that upper. Still a fantastic upper, really comfortable, breathable, holds the foot nicely in place without being really too narrow or anything like that. So yeah, it's just more of the same, possibly slightly better than the Speed 2, but not massively. Uh, and I am very much enjoyed running in all those those runs. When, when I was using it for interval sessions as well, it's fantastic. It's just a great shoe for picking up the pace up very quickly uh, and then relaxing back into a slower pace. It can do that very well, whereas certain other shoes, if you were doing that with a, a carbon plate shoe, you, it would be fast, but you probably wouldn't enjoy the slower bits uh, as much as you do in this shoe. So I just think it's it's still a fantastic all-rounder. Saucony has made some great decisions in that they've not made any massive adjustments to the shoe because they really didn't need to. Uh, and it's well worth a look if you're looking for a faster training session um, trainer or something that you just want to cover everything uh, with one with one shoe. So my verdict on the Endorphin Speed Three is still a fantastic shoe. It's it's still one of the best all 
rounder options out there for anything from training miles, daily miles, all the way up to tempo sessions and race day. It's not going to blow your mind if you tried the the Speed Two. You're not. It's pretty much the same. You're not going to notice anything majorly different in this shoe, but that's a good thing because you don't probably want anything any major differences in the shoe. Uh, there was a risk that if if Saucony had tried to do that, it might ruin one of the best shoes that we've ever tested. Uh, so um, I'm very pleased they haven't done that. And I think it's still a fantastic shoe. Great option for all those different runs that you want to do. And a brilliant option if you just want one shoe to take you from training all the way up to race day. Um, what I would say as well is that the if you can get the Speed 2 cheaper, which you presumably can now because... Um, now the Speed 3 is out, a lot of uh, stores are probably lowering their price for the Speed 2. I'd probably say get that if you can get that at a significantly lower price because for me, there's not many big changes in the shoe from, from the Speed 2. So if you can get it cheaper, maybe look at that. Uh, they also have some nicer colorways in the Speed 2. The Speed 3 doesn't have the best colorways at the moment. I'm not a big fan of designs, but um, I think... It's going to take a bit of time for Saucony to release some more colorways uh, to the Speed 3 that are probably a little bit less blue than, than this shoe. Um, but yeah, I think it's a fantastic shoe. Uh, probably still the best option out there for all-rounder training all the way up to race day. There's probably other shoes out there that can... Or other options that you'd look at are things like the Hockham Mac 5, which doesn't have a plate. Delivers a very similar sort of experience, but this, the Speed 3 is just better. It's just got more cushioning in it. That plate is really good, slightly subtle in comparison to a carbon plate shoe that's designed for racing, but still just gives you a lovely bit of speed and a lovely bit of toe off. And the speed roll technology in it as well is brilliant for smooth transitions and just holding a consistent pace uh, in training runs. So Saucony Speed 3, still a great shoe, well worth picking up uh, if you want an all-rounder trainer that veers towards speed. Speed three, in summation, like changes have been made haven't suited me perfectly. Like I said, the fit isn't ideal for me anymore. I get a little bit of slippage, but I think the ride is still as good. And I hope basically that the changes made will allow more people to enjoy this shoe uh, than in the past. You know, the wider fit, the extra stability, if that's been a problem for you with the speed line before, I think you're getting a better shoe here for you, a more suitable shoe that you can use for more running. And I hope lots more people get to enjoy it, even if I get a little bit of heel rubbing from time to time. I'm not gonna complain too much. Like I say, the ride is still just as good, and I think it's the best all-rounder option going from any brand. Um, I think it's quite clear in that category uh, at the moment. Like, if you are a one-shoe runner but still want to excel on race day, then the Speed 3 is the best one to you. It's the best shoe to buy. You can do really well in all your training runs in it, and then go out and perform really well in races. You know, it's not quite the level of the Endorphin Pro 3 or other top-tier carbon super shoes when it comes to race day performance, but it really is very close, and it is cheaper, and it is more comfortable and great for using all the time. Other all-rounder shoes that maybe come close, like I am really enjoying testing the Hoka Mac 5 at the moment. That's a lot cheaper, plateless option, but while that is a very comfortable shoe, a more comfortable shoe than the Speed, probably for easy efforts, it's not got the zip you're getting from this shoe on those harder runs. And then the Puma Deviate Nitro 2, I think should be a great shoe when that comes out, but we haven't managed to get hold of it yet. But that's one to look out for if you're looking at plated training options that actually could be very good racing options and also quite comfortable for easy runs. So also, if you're not a one-shoe runner, it sits very comfortably in a rotation. I think um, it is a great daily trainer that's also really good for speed sessions. The odd race, maybe when you're saving your very expensive carbon racing shoe for you know other key races, I'd probably fit it in between a you know a top carbon racing shoe and then a more cushioned uh, easy day shoe that's just a little bit more comfortable than the Speed 3. If you are using a three shoe rotation yeah i think we talked about it uh, talked about it in the run test as well but i think a quick note would be on this like in the past my recommendation probably would get would be to get the speed three from the endorphin pro line and not really worry too much about the pro i think now the pro three is an outstanding uh carbon racing shoe and i think it's better than this shoe for racing so you could look at getting both you know as a training shoe to partner with the carbon racing shoe or, you know, if you're just looking at buying one, maybe the Endorphin Pro 3 would be a slightly better option if you are worried about race day performance, because I think it is a superb racing shoe that is very comfortable and can rack up a lot of training miles as well, even if the Speed 3 is better suited to that. I probably would be looking at both if you're looking at that line, but you could also get the Speed 3 and pair it with any other carbon shoe as well. That's what I've tended to do in recent years, and that's still a great way to go. So guys, that's our review of the Socoli Endorphin Speed 3. Let us know what you think in the comments. Have you been a long-term fan of this shoe? What do you think of these changes? Or are you a new convert to the shoe who's you know, been won over because it is more stable and has that wider fit? Let us know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell. Look out for the new Run Tester podcast that's coming soon. And yeah, we'll see you next time.